Welcome to Discover Health, a White Mountain Perspective. I am your host, Dr. Tom Barella. On this program, we explore health issues that are prevalent in the White Mountains. Today's topic is marijuana, the data for 2016. Our guests today are Debbie Campbell, Executive Director of the NCDP, a drug-free community coalition, and Alicia Phillips, Program Coordinator. Welcome to the show. And I will say welcome to the show, and I'm extremely excited to hear about the Drug Coalition and the topic of marijuana because the data is evolving. And I'm sure you're gonna present some interesting facts that we can use to guide our community. So let's start with the easy stuff. Okay, don't Tell us what marijuana is. Well, marijuana is one of the most common, commonly abused illicit drugs in, in Arizona. It comes from the hemp plant where you use the um, flowers, the stems, and the, it's the cannabis sativa. <laughs> but the most potent ingredient in it is the Delta 9 tetracannabinoid, and also referred to as THC. So that's a big word. <laughs> well, let's uh, just use THC th because th I don't want to remember. Be, I don't want to remember big would words. THC work the best. Okay. So there are different forms of this. I know we're beginning to get used to it. How is it actually obtained? Not obtained, but distributed. How does it come? Here in our community, we have um, our the medical dis medical marijuana that's sold at a dispensary here, and some of the forms that it comes in is, well, we have dabbing, and if Debbie would like to talk about dabbing, then we'll move into some other things. Yeah, one of the, one of the new trends um, that's, that we're seeing in the community, and this has been confirmed uh, by our local police officers, is uh, marijuana liquefied somewhat and distilled through a butane process. Um, I, I want to just mention that butane process because back in the day when we had meth labs exploding, <laughs> Nowadays, when you see, say, a hotel room exploding, it may be an extraction process going on with the butane. You see a pile of butane bottles, empty butane refill bottles somewhere. It's a pretty good indicator that there's some distillation going on of the marijuana into a more liquefied and more potent product. Um, so it becomes uh, what in the past was like hash oil, an oily based substance, it may be more waxy or buttery, so it goes by names like that, like butter, um, honey oil, still hash oil, uh, if it's uh, refined a little bit more so that it's uh, more f you know, fragile, it's uh, called chatter. And the thing with, uh, with what they, they smoke it in a process called dabbing, so they take this, this um, butter onto a, a nail, they call it, and then heat it and breathe it in that way. But it's, you know, one dab could be as much as five joints. And we know one joint today compared to one joint back in the day when we were growing up, you know, is about 10 times as strong. So you're saying one dab could be 50 old joints. That's pretty, pretty concerning. So it's just another method for concentrating it. Mm -hmm. And then it gives you lots of variations in the way you can actually take it in mm -hmm in your body, super that's high. scary. Super high. That's and, super high. And the other form is the edible marijuana. And one of the things that I've done out in the community when I've gone out to educate kids, it's I've shown them the marketing of how they're displaying this marijuana into our edibles. Instead of calling it pop, pot tart, pop tart, you would call it pop tart. Pop tarts. Pop tarts. Pop I'll get this. And then, for example, when I worked at the school, we had these drinks called Dizzy or Izzy. Izzy. Now it looks like a... <laughs> I'm kind Sounds of, like an appropriate yes. word, <laughs> but, Izzy, yeah. Izzy. But if you look, if you were to look at the bottle of an Izzy drink and one that um, has the marijuana in it, it's very similar. So that's wow. a concern at, as a parent. And then if you look at, everybody knows what Klondike bars look like. You look at the, the marketing of the Klondike bar, but you have to read the fine reading on it that it says it contains, keep out of reach of children. And if you have a small child going into a freezer, they're not gonna be know, know what they get. Right. And then in addition, some of the other goodies like our gummy bears, 
that kids eat. Um, it, it's coming to school in the form of brownies, cookies, and that as you know, as a former educator, that's a concern. What's coming into our what's school it? district and what kids are being offered. And again, we don't know the potency or how much of this you eat. It could be very toxic for children. Yeah, I'm sure that that's one of the problems is the way it's distributed in the concentrations. Well, another concern is if a parent has a medical marijuana card mm -hmm. and buys their medical marijuana in food and they take it home, it could be in a gummy bear format. And uh, again, there's no way to determine how much content of THC is in that gummy bear. And the recommended dose is, say, 10 micrograms, milligrams, whatever it is, and this maybe gummy bear has 50. Yes. So what are you going to do? Okay, I'm going to eat a leg and I'm going to put the rest aside. I don't think so. You're probably going to eat it all. But what if it's a brownie or a cookie? They're laying on the table. They're laying on the kitchen counter. A child cannot discern the difference. Certainly a risk factor depending upon how the parent stores it. Mm -hmm. So let's look at some of the other issue, which is you know, when does exposure normally start to marijuana? Uh, I mean, you're talking about children. You know, what is the, when does it begin? Well, it's, it's really, it's very concerning for us because the average age, age is 13. Those are basically your sixth and seventh graders. And now in Colorado, that we're talking about eight-year-olds beginning marijuana, and that's third, third graders. So that's pretty... Pretty young. Yeah, it's awfully young. We're going to spend some time talking about some of the Colorado data since it's been legalized, and and of course there's a lot of uh, a lot of data now emerging from the two years or so that that it's been um, uh, commercially available in a non-prescription uh, stores, and and eight years of age or even 13 years of age seems to be an age when children have difficulties discerning proper use if there is a proper use at that age. And our concern with that too is that the brain isn't fully developed at that point. I mean we've got young kids whose brains are in the developmental stage and now being exposed to the marijuana. Well we have some data too. Don't you have some data from Navajo County to show uh, when kids are exposed in Navajo County? This is this is more local. Yes mm -hmm. and if you look at our eighth graders, we'll start with our eighth graders that have ever used it, you're looking at one out of five kids. If you look at our 10th graders, it's one out of four. And then our 12th graders, it's one out of three. So obviously, that's a concern. And, that's, and then in the past 30 days, we have one in 14 8th graders um, that have used it in the past 30 days, one in six 10th graders, and one in seven 12th graders. And we get this data every two years. We do a survey in the schools. It's called the Arizona Youth Survey. It's a questionnaire that is given to our 8th, 10th, and 12th graders with a lot of questions concerning um, drugs. So, and it's very valuable information for the school, and it, it helps us do our, our job as well. And, and that is also consistent, actually, with uh, um, Colorado data, which suggested that 30% of all children under 18 uh, have been exposed to marijuana at some time. And, um, and I know you're going to show some data along those lines, too. Mm -hmm. and, and there are some developmental issues with it, even though the data is now emerging. But what happens? Well, a short, some of our short-term effects are, you know, reduced inhibitions. Um, it can cause driving to become very dangerous for kids, coordination, your heart rate increasing. Um, anything you'd like to touch on? Well, with reduced inhibition, that creates a whole other sector yes. of behaviors that can become an issue, especially if they're often combining it with alcohol. That's or sexual activity on the show. Sexual we, activity is uh, what uh, I was uh, getting we've, to. We've talked about that on, yeah. on the show previously uh, about that. So and then it will affect your thinking, your problem solving, and you know you'll develop some anxiety, possibly panic attacks, distrust. So there's a lot of things that parents need to be aware of when if they suspect their child using marijuana. I know there's been data to show that there's an actual marijuana receptor in the brain mm -hmm. very similar to the receptor for narcotics that 
causes addiction and stuff like that, and at least the narcotic addicts like heroin and stuff like that. And I know though a lot of that data hasn't completely been finished working out, but that certainly is a high risk potential. But, um, if, but if you do have addiction in your family, you, do, you are more likely to be predisposed to addiction. That, oh. I believe, is, is a proven okay. fact. Right. And if you have that history, then you need to be more careful about your, you know, your dabbling in habits because that can hook you a little bit faster than if, if you, know, you don't have that background. Yeah, so um, that's always been an issue and a concern with, with, um, with habits, no matter what the habit is. Certainly that w was uh, an, an issue that wasn't recognized, at least in smoking in the 1950s. Mm. The habituation to nicotine um, that we didn't recognize when all the te television commercials had smokers in it. And now, of course, we realize not only is smoking a, a, a severe addiction, but it has long-term health consequences, at least with respect to lung cancer. And the other part, too, the, if you look back at t the tobacco industry, this, the younger you start it, the more, I mean, the chances of becoming addicted to the tobacco mm -hmm. happen, which is, will be the same thing that they say will happen with the marijuana as well. And marketing and, to children. And, and, and yes. that's, a very good, that's, a, that's a very good analogy. And, and we don't, of course, know that data yet because it's the long term, the long term, but it's certainly a risk factor. And I think as well you're going to see the lung damage being done, which will w follow the da data like we have with the, with the tobacco industry, with people developing lung problems and things with potentially the marijuana as well. Much greater. And yeah. it, it's interesting, the Colorado data shows a marked rise in hospitalization for asthma mm -hmm. and uh, in children that have been using uh, marijuana. And so that, and that's what I have read as well as I, you know, the respiratory infections that that um, people are getting from prolonged use of the the marijuana. Okay. And well. then missing work because you can't come to work if you're not feeling well, typically. Or school. So or school. I would <laughs> hope they don't miss school. I hope they don't miss school, but but that possibility certainly also also exists. Mm -hmm. Um, and we don't know a lot of the long-term effects of addiction yet, but there's lots of supposition out there from other illnesses and behaviors when people become, if, if addiction occurs. Well, the other part, I think, coming from the educational sector in following Colorado, they're seeing kids are just dropping out of school their long-term goals are, I mean, they're not staying in school to graduate or they're being kicked out of school yeah, for, for drugs different on things, yes. And I mean, just the lack of wanting to do well in school as well. So this is something that we're gonna be watching with our, two, well, if it occurs in Arizona. Um, just the legalization, it, the legalization it's already I mean, occurring. It's already occurring, but just to follow the data in schools, what's happening with the legalization of rec recreational marijuana. And, and we're continuing to follow it here mm -hmm. in, um, in, in our local county. Yes. Correct. And the, in our local area that, mm -hmm. that you guys And the guys two have. schools that we, that we really watch are the Blue Ridge School District and Sholo and follow their trends. That's um, what our, our funding is. That's where our focus is. Your funding is. Funding is fun. focus yeah. Do you know whether there's funding, for example, in, uh, in uh, Snowflake or Holbrook? Uh, they're, they're being covered under some state um, grants by the county, I believe, right now for prescription drug, focusing on prescription drugs. And we have a parallel uh, organization coalition like our own in Apache County. And that extends, I believe, at least up to I-40. So all of the south part of Apache County, and we're, we're focused on the, on the population center of the south part of the county. So even though your program is mostly related to, to Sholo, uh, Pine Top Lakeside, the recognition is that it's a broader program and that there are other parallel programs mm -hmm. maybe on the east side in Apache County mm -hmm. and a little bit north of us in, in Snowflake and, and Holbrook. Yeah, there is a greater recognition of the problem and, and money is being, being focused on it. But I just returned from a week-long academy <clears throat> and all the other, well, the other coalitions, it was an academy of coalitions and the focus of the coalitions throughout the nation is the recreational marijuana, marijuana. 
the recreational Everyone use. Yes. And, and we'll get to that a little bit because we're going to talk about the, the, you have a graph I see in the future, mm -hmm. the presentation to talk about the, where it is legal from um, recreational use, sorry, uh, and stuff. So let's uh, go on further. And actually, one of the things that we're finding with, uh, as far as uh, mar marijuana be sees the United States, is that if you've been following the trend, the potency of the marijuana that they're seizing has just become higher and higher and higher. So, um, locally hybrid. This is being hybrid in in the U.S. It's still coming across the border uh, with Mexico, and and the the amount of marijuana that's confiscated by near the border by DEA is just overwhelming and that's only like a tenth of what's coming through uh, from Mexico but what's happening here hybrid uh, marijuana being produced particularly for the medical marijuana industry has you know focused on uh, the THC and making that as as, as strong and, and as, as potent as possible so it's, what's on the street is no different than what's medical marijuana. I mean, medical marijuana is still on the street because it's hybrid and it's selling at a higher cost than the Mexican marijuana because of the THC content. So that means that there's still some type of a black market out there for, yes. for it. So I, a, a question I do not know the answer to is when you can buy medical marijuana at a dispensary, if it becomes legalized for recreational use, can you buy that same type of marijuana for recreational use? There's I no mean, difference. there's no, di that's there's the no point. Difference. And, and so that can be a very uh, difficult problem to deal with. Well, the other part too is we have to remember that um, the medical marijuana is recommended, it's not prescribed. Yeah, <laughs> careful distinction. It is. But, but from a physician standpoint, the thing that concerns me is that as, as you get increased potency, for any possible addiction, it becomes very similar to uh, pain drug addiction where you're required to get stronger and stronger and stronger and then you reach a point where you have to go over the edge for pain management or, or addiction to a stronger and stronger drug. And but similarly, there's a difference between what you would prescribe for someone who weighs 100 pounds and what you would prescribe for someone who weighs 200 pounds. And everybody's taking the same prescription with medical marijuana. There's, you know, it's one, one hit or two hits. I mean, it's, it, the, the potency is still there the same across the board. Yes, and that is a significant potential issue. Mm -hmm from a physician standpoint and from... And a way to measure it. Yes, and, and, and that of course is uh, an issue for um, the government agencies is to try to determine a technique to measure the strength mm -hmm. of marijuana. Okay, and that makes sense. So, the legalization is an issue for the whole country. Yes. Com uh, legalization for recreational use is an issue for the whole country. That's it's coming. And I mean, it's just interesting, everybody, when I was at my academy, has jumped on board preparing, what are we gonna do if it comes into our community or how can we keep it from coming into our, being voted upon by the voters? So I would say everyone's taking a very proactive stance on this. From the coalition from side. From the coalition side. Communities basically are still a yes. little bit behind the eight ball on what's, what's gonna be coming on the ballot. Now the coalition that you're part of, that not that a nation, nationwide coalition? Um, it's not a nationwide coalition. We're one of 650 or so federally funded coalitions, coalitions in the nation. But so basically across the country. Across the country. So we're all kind of you know, working on the same large plan. Recognizing that this is a pervasive problem. Mm -hmm. What we've discovered that a lot of our youth are getting their marijuana from holders of mar marijuana, oh, medical good marijuana. Point. And this is local holders. data. This is our Navajo County data. It's yes. not state data. Wow. So, and you know, they're getting it from school, from pot parties, and of course from friends. That's concerning <clears throat> for us. And right now, this is all illegal. It is illegal for, for anyone without a medical marijuana card. But the quantity that you're able to get with a medical marijuana card is so large that, I mean, you'd have to pretty much, you know, chain smoke to, to consume it all. So there's a lot available for... Okay, consumption. Consumption by others, perhaps. Okay, well, that is also a significant issue, but 
you know, that's why there are drug coalitions and, and approaches to this is because of the recognition that children are getting it. They have to get it from somewhere and um, it's, it's friends, family, et cetera. Well, right now, alcohol, kids say alcohol is the easiest thing to get, the okay. easiest substance to get, and for children, it is illegal. Right. But when you think of that many kids getting medical marijuana access from well, card let, holders, let, and, and when it becomes recreational, there's more of it present in the community. Well, let's go on. I, I want to make sure that we get to some of the legal issues of this. Um, so um, do you have, you have the slide of medical marijuana in the United States? Mm -hmm. As far as what states are, have yeah. approved it, yes, we do. There's about, what, 14 states? Well, as far as it being considered, what is it, legal yeah. for medical and recreation use, you have Washington, Oregon, Colorado, and Alaska in the District of Columbia. And then you have other states that um, it's just for medical use, which would be Montana, Arizona, New Mexico, Navajo, California, and then some states back, back east. east. All of New England. So, and you know, there's concern now that people are going into Colorado to get their marijuana, marijuana and, and then jumping states. Okay. So, are taking it back into other states. So, you know, and, and you can see um, on, on one of your presentations that use in states which legalize it is markedly better than, or not better, but higher, higher. than in other states. Yeah, that's. I, I just want to make sure that we get to some of the the, the use and, and, and data in children, mm -hmm. younger children, as we get close to um, the end of our program. So if we could skip ahead, uh, there's marijuana ingestion among children under 12. Mm -hmm. Yes, they had, they had six, well, it, as far as now, again, we're looking at Colorado because we do follow oh, the Colorado data. Oh, so this is Colorado data. data. Colorado da data, <clears throat> excuse me. But I know that I sent Debbie an article, my daughter had sent me from Portland, that a little boy had found a package thinking it was brownies, and he picked it up and ate it. Come to find out, it was um, laced with the marijuana, oh. and he became very, very sick. Very scary. So it was very scary, okay. and, you know, Again, we, we don't want that showing up on our streets and you know, pick kids keep picking it up and eating that, not knowing okay. what it is. All right. But, and then you look at law enforcement. And again, we're, we have been following Colorado and you know, the crime rate's going up, the um, crimes against people is going up. So there's a, there's a huge concern, not only for, with the, with the legalization of the recreational marijuana or recreational marijuana, you're going to see an increase of kids showing up in the emergency rooms, the mm -hmm. mental health treatment facilities. There, I mean, ev everything that involved in. And, and that is true concern. data. That's, it is. It is and true. I just, I, I'm hoping that we can get the word out so people understand the seriousness of this and how it's going to affect our community. And, and you think of bringing that up, the effect on the ER, and, and like we were speaking before the show, we have one pediatrician clinic here now. And, you know, so where are people to go? But, with but, the, with their but there's more data about increases in, in oh, yeah. terms of how it affects those of us that might not use. Mm -hmm. Um, marijuana and the traffic accident data exactly. where they've mm -hmm. done toxicology studies on accident drivers shows it's it's going up and typically they'll find the alcohol and then they'll <coughs> find the marijuana as well okay. and with the accidents the fatalities and it's what 32 percent rise in accidents mm -hmm. in Colorado in, in Colorado, Colorado 25 percent rise in emergency room visits Correct. and uh, and then the hospitalizations 38 percent and this yep. is all marijuana related it's not just they've got a something else going on this is since marijuana has been legalized wow now I know that there's issues that the political people talk about increasing <coughs> state revenues from from getting that money uh, coming into the tax thing. So they're getting more money, but they're also having to sp spend more well, because of all of these ancillary health. issues. Yeah. But not only that, and speaking with some of our colleagues from Colorado, the schools thought they were going to get this huge fund of money for the schools, and it just they went into the capital repairs They redirected the it. You so. know, I, I, I want to finish as we get close to the <coughs> end here. Um, one slide that I was really f surprised to find in your presentation is uh, how it affects the personally teenagers. 
Well, we're, <coughs> excuse me, an increase of, well, the suicides are increasing and with marijuana being one of the top component or substances that they're finding in our youth. And I know that in speaking with an administrator, friend of mine, he had to, actually the student had to actually leave the school district because of the marijuana. He had developed some schizophrenic type behavior. So he withdrew from that. So as, as we come to the, uh, I know you have a drug coalition and that you guys are really involved with. I know we've had a presentation in March this year, a, a large amount of, of education okay. program. Hopefully this will be also be an education program. Um, as we close here, what, what, is, what can we do as parents, family, to continue to support our children and the education program. There's one tool there if you would like to pick it up, that box. Oh. We offer these for free <coughs> for parents. It's a, f a f 12 panel drug kit, and it's not to, to so much, um, you know, what, as a consequence for children, but it's, it's a tool to give to children so that parents can say, look, you know, this is sitting on the okay. kitchen counter. Now a child can say not, if he's asked at school, but when he's asked at school to do to okay. try drugs, he can say, "Oh, I can't. Okay. Uh, my parents may drug test me at home." So we have so these that's for the home free. Thing. So we All have right. these for free at our coalition. But right, the other cool. thing I'd like to We're, point out is just educate yourself. Okay, okay. education. Well, this is an interesting topic that's not going to go away. Thank you for participating today. It was very in, informative, and I hope that uh, our audience enjoys. Uh, at least having the information. And thank you for watching our Discover Health program today. Remember, healthy habits lead to a healthy life. Thank you.